All right, everyone. So today we have Tim with us. And today we are going to talk about this film, which is really creating a lot of news and a lot of buzz. And I hardly know anyone who has seen this film and not enjoyed it. Godzilla vs. Kong. So uh, I, I have a very nice uh, personal relationship with both Godzilla and Kong. And we just, we'll just discuss it in a bit. Uh, let us just ask uh, Tim about his initial reactions and, and, and what he has to say. I, I saw it yesterday in the movie theater. You could okay. be jealous now. Be jealous right here. Yeah, I saw it in the theater yesterday, and it was delightful because there was only three other people in the movie theater with me, and and I was just so happy. I'm since I was a child, I've loved Godzilla, and I've always been familiar with King Kong. So to see this CGI festival of monsters, it was awesome. Uh, I saw this film and I kind of like felt uh, bad for not being able to, you know, watch this film on the big screen because I was watching it on my television. I was like, this would have been an experience, you know, like this would have been something, but never mind. I, you know, I would have thought so too, except it didn't seem that much to me. I think because the sound of this film wasn't so deep, heavy bass, which I like you know, when you see Jurassic Park. Yeah, I do too. And this somehow they avoided that. It was a little bit more, um tinny sounding perhaps um but so it, it didn't have that incredible audio feel that i would have hoped for but still it was it was a fun film really good to see that they made up for the mistakes of the previous godzilla film hmm. uh-oh look who's here oh we have maya no yeah oh wow that's right. All right, I can stop that. Yeah, yeah, I bought this little, there's a shop not too far from here, and I couldn't resist about five or six years ago buying this Godzilla statue from my desk. I like Godzilla. That is so cool. He's cool. You know, I, I was thinking about Godzilla versus Kong, and I was like, who would I root for? And it was definitely Kong. Oh, okay. I'm the opposite. Because, because I'm scared of lizards. <laughs> I used to have a pet snake, so I can't say I'm scared. Pet snake, seriously? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that was in high school, I think. No, college. And I, I bought a boa constrictor. It was about five feet long. So as tall as I was. I'm very short. But but, but it, it said that they can eat people up. Like, you know, when they sleep, or when you're sleeping and they kind of come next to you and they spread themselves along your length, they're kind of like, figuring out that whether they can swallow you or not and one day they do <laughs> that's what I'm i heard. kept it in. we're getting off topic here back to godzilla <laughs> yes okay <laughs> okay so the first question in our godzilla marathon is what is the sound that is, that is so cool can't help it i love that sound everybody who knows me knows i love godzilla because i grew up with it I went back and I looked. The original Godzilla was made in Japan in 1954. And Godzilla versus King Kong was 1962. So, I mean, when it was made, we were both, well, I was just an imagination. You were the imagination in your grandparents. So think about that. So anyway, I grew up, I grew up with Godzilla because we always had Saturday morning horror TV shows. And growing up in the 60s, we were the generation where the old universal monsters, you know, the Frankenstein, the werewolf, the creature from the Black Lagoon, all these things, plus the 1950s um, uh, mad scientist and invader movies were still high technology for us kids back in the 60s. So when Godzilla came on TV, and it came on TV a lot on Saturday mornings, actually it was 12 noon Saturday afternoon. Um, it was just a thrill for me. So I've always enjoyed Godzilla. And it's not until a few years ago that I came to appreciate King Kong because I taught it in a class. I did a class on um, film remakes. So we went through the three film versions of King Kong. That was before this whole new Kong Skull Island stuff came out. So anywho, so I always had this history of Godzilla from my childhood, but I'm amazed 
by you. Uh, what was your history or your, where does your nostalgia for Godzilla and King Kong come from? What's so your story? So for me, um, it's King Kong more than Godzilla because when I was a kid, uh, we had that King Kong movie, no? Uh, the one with Jessica Lange in it, if I'm not mistaken. 1970s. No, yeah, 1970s, I think. Yeah, it, it has to be sometime around that. So when I was like really young, I, I, I could, uh, must have been like three or four or something, you know, when you're just beginning to develop a memory, a long-term memory. And, uh, yeah. and and that was when I saw that film. And and, the, and around that time, you know, uh, for, for a kid, it's like, okay, so, so the uh, movies are like just four to five movies and that's it. And these are all the stories there are in the world. So it was that kind of an idea for me. So King Kong was established in my mind around that time. I was able, I was introduced to Godzilla. So I was introduced to Jurassic Park and all the dinosaurs before. Yeah. And then Godzilla came into the picture, which was that I think it's uh, the... Uh, the, was it released in 98 or when was it released the the recent Godzilla that was the one where Godzilla the American make yeah, where it yes, was yes, Godzilla yes, made yes. New York City yeah, yeah. Yes, it's yes. so funny Steven Spielberg said that his Jurassic Park adaptation of the novel was inspired by Godzilla and then I think that that first um, American attempt at Godzilla was inspired by Jurassic Park. I couldn't tell the difference between the two movies. Spielberg, so Spielberg loved Godzilla. He's my age, so he and I both grew up with Godzilla on TV every Saturday. Also, I think King Kong, I grew up with the original 1930s King Kong, which was hot stuff for me as a kid. But then there were also those remakes of King Kong I don't remember remakes of King Kong, but I remember there were these attempts at um, getting the spirit of Kong. Movies like A Woman with a Giant Gorilla, Friends with a Gorilla. These were just attempts to... Mighty Joe Young. I like that film. Mighty Joe Young. That's it. Ah, I called it Big Joe. Hey, I was close. (laughs) Mighty Joe Young. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that 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 was an attempt to feed off the King Kong craze. Yeah, yeah. But I like that film. That was a Disney movie, if I'm not mistaken. I love the Peter Jackson um, remake. My students watched that film and then they came away and said, Peter Jackson, Lord of the Rings, same thing. You know, he took a he took a film that could have been one hour and 20 minutes and made it three hours. And most of that was King Kong fighting, fighting lizards, King Kong fighting bats. But that was. But then th- that's the kind of thing one expects to see also when it comes to a King Kong or a Godzilla film, isn't it? Like that, that's what the tradition has been. No, yeah. no. I think the tradition has always been to try to... Well, there's, there's always complaints about Kong as a racist image. And those complaints, criticisms stand up. But... The end of Kong is the end of the original 30s. King Kong is is him falling down and um, the character who captured him saying it wasn't the planes that killed him. It was love. And so that's been the constant theme that Kong becomes humanized. He becomes human with with heartfelt passion brought out by this woman. Boy, I say that so terribly. This woman brought out by... <laughs> <laughs> what's wrong with that man <laughs> anyway the poor monkey um so i think that's that's to me is the heart of king kong to see the beast being um being tamed by his own desire for one woman and one woman only yeah that's why i thought what's his name peter jackson's remake was incredible because of the cgi i think the man who played kong was the same one who played Gollum. you know that famous actor andy sidaris i don't know anyway he he's he did kong it was just wonderful wonderful um, creation of the of the monkey and none of these, pre- uh, none of the previous movies in this one franchise of uh, Kong versus Godzilla worked for me because I think it they only got it right in this film, which which worked for me at least. 
you know it it was it was either too dark or it was either too up close or it was i don't know it never worked for me in the earlier films but this one the op- from the opening shot on you know it is so picturesque and and godzilla oh sorry uh, kong is like uh, he right away comes as a character which which you root for you know yeah so, yeah so so i think the, the this worked uh, well for me in this film but uh, what what was it that worked for you for me it was the i can't really talk about it because there's going to be spoilers if i do but it was the constant people call it easter eggs i prefer to call it the the respect or the hints that are given to previous films that inspired this one i just thought that Godzilla in this was terrifying the opening scene when he's attacking the laboratory in Florida mm-hmm. it's shot from far away and it's to me it was just frightening very very well done the fight scene in the ships and none of this is spoilers because if you read even the New York Times review you're going to see all these comments and it's in the trailer King Kong is on a ship being transported somewhere when yeah. Godzilla surprises them. That fight scene was amazing. And I'm not going to say who won and who lost. Nobody dies in this movie. Um, well, that's a spoiler. The, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway. And then the second fight scene, which takes place in Hong Kong. Again, no surprise. It's in the trailer. I just, like you just said, they were so well done. And I think I was most pleased that the film went beyond the trailer. Because if you remember the, the trailer, you can, the trailer just featured the two creatures fighting. And it featured a human saying, something's wrong with Godzilla. Now he's attacking us. So I was so pleased that the film went beyond that trailer. Because oftentimes you watch the trailer. That's it. I've seen the movie. I'm done. I'm going home. By the way, get my popcorn. Um, Where this one, it held more surprises. And that was joyful. That was delightful that a a trailer was able to control itself. Give you just enough to say, oh, man, I got to see that. But don't give you the story about what really happened. What I also liked in this film was that you know, so if we talk about the the uh, the nineteen nineties version of Godzilla, which was um, from the perspective only of the people of the city, and the mm-hmm. uh, and the previous installments of this franchise were essentially uh, from the perspective of Godzilla alone, but this film had a nice balance. This film, uh, you know, uh, sh- sh- showed us the reactions of the uh, of the monsters, if we want to call them yeah. that, and the people in the cities as well. So, so there was a nice balance that I felt was maintained throughout the film, which was which was not there in any of the earlier films. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I like that. Um, I, I just read an article on the internet a few minutes ago. It said that uh, the movie studio in Japan that owns the rights to Godzilla they had to really negotiate with the filmmakers because they said Godzilla is a God. We don't want him to emote. We don't want him to show emotions, but the American filmmakers said there was a constant back and forth because they wanted this Godzilla to show emotion. And as the article said, and I agree, there's one scene where it looks like Godzilla smiles. (laughs) I saw it. He smiled. Um, but the filmmakers said, hey, you see him smile. We don't see him smile. We just see, you know, an evil shit faced monster. So um, I, I like that their portrayal of Godzilla was hmm. was fair and balanced and very emotional, too. Have you seen the Shin Godzilla? That yeah. was the one that came out about eight years ago in Japan. That's what my little friend here is. He's the he's the Japanese Godzilla that came out. So when I was in Tokyo a few years ago and Shin Godzilla had just come out, I went to see it at a midnight showing at a Tokyo movie theater. It's amazing. Shin Godzilla tried to recreate, um, it was a remake of Godzilla and it used this, the old soundtrack. It used the old sounds of the, of the monster. It was just incredible to see that film in Tokyo be surrounded by a Japanese audience 
And I have to tell you, Japanese audiences are amazing. They go totally quiet and they stay in their seats completely quiet until the final credit has rolled and then they get up and leave. Trivia. I also just looked up how is the original Godzilla sound made? The, the sound artist took a glove, covered it with tar, and then took a string bass and ran his hand over the bass, the, you know, the, the deep yeah, yeah. stringed in. And then he slowed the sound down. So that's how they got that original roar, that, that beautiful Godzilla sound in the early films. Trivia. I always thought it was an elephant making the Godzilla sound, but it's not. <laughs> uh, ironically, a movie that had excellent bass sounds was um, The Quiet Place. Oh, The Quiet Place. It, when, the second part, when is the second part expected? It was supposed to be out April last year, but they delayed it. So now I don't know the, the, the date. That but that movie in the theaters was amazing. Film. That was one. It was like the, for the whole of the first half, no one talks. No one talks. I, I, and still it is so fast paced. It's not even funny. Yes. Yes. And the audience too. When, when you see it in the audience here uh, in the movie theater, everybody around you is so tense and the slightest little noise, it's loud noise. Everybody jumps in, in shock in that movie. Another one was um, who made Hereditary, uh, Midsommar. Midsommar. Have you seen that one yet? I haven't oh. even seen Hereditary yet. Oh, oh, <laughs> I can't. Midsommar. Oh, oh. Um, Midsommar. I remember the man sitting a couple seats over from me. I could actually hear him holding his breath because there were moments in that film that are so tense that everybody is just clinging to their seat. It's not, it's not an action film. It's a horror film. Um, the things that happen in the film are so terrible and you're expecting it. You're waiting for it. And I swear the guy next to me, I could hear him go <gasps> and hold his breath. And then, <gasps> <laughs> you know, the, the scariest movie uh, for me uh, in the recent past will be uh, the conjuring. Oh, oh man. Um, First one. It's the yeah first the first one. one the first one it scared me so bad it scared me so bad it's not even funny I I postponed all of my travel plans by three months after I watched that film I was I, I was so shaken up the, the whole build up of you know there is something that someone can see and uh, it is like so uh, threatening and dangerous which is beyond our comprehension and we can't see it but someone else can and it's all around them and no one has any power over it that i think that whole idea scared me a bit too much that's I one really... movie i want to forget actually because it scared me so much oh. okay I, then then i shouldn't remind you that what, what was it knock knock that they did in the film oh good lord oh, oh that was perfect and you know, Perfect. even 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 the the parts which were so expectedly and you know which were so obviously um, yeah supposed to make you jump in your seat, yeah. even they worked like they had worked in none of the other films before. Like you know, you, you, you when they go completely silent, you know something's gonna happen, you know, and it would happen. But still, they you know that, that scene in, in which that ghost is right above the the closet, you know that, that right. it still give me it, it still comes to me at times when I'm alone. Like the thing that's on the shelf behind you. No. So uh, coming back to Godzilla versus Kong, <laughs> Tim. Uh, another thing which I noticed was that uh, there were a lot of shots and sequences which reminded me of a lot of films uh, which were like my absolute favorite from the 90s. And one such shot very distinctly was uh, when the van was going and uh, that little girl from Stranger Things, her, na her name is Miley. Mm. I'm bad with names. So she's going and that whole sequence uh, is shot. It reminded me of those helicopter shots that we had in Twister, uh, the Steven Spielberg film. And, and, and a lot of other sequences also kind of reminded me of similar films from, you know, from the 90s, actually. Uh -huh. that, I just read that that whole helicopter thing was um, taken from the 1962 Kong versus Godzilla. Oh, 
in the film, Japanese researchers capture King Kong because they want to use him for some sort of, I think, advertising or something. Yeah, and they're trying yeah. to bring him to the main islands in Japan. And um, and the Godzilla comes and knocks the ship and King Kong swims to Japan. And then later when Godzilla's trashing Japan, they come up with the bright idea, well, we have this giant monkey running around. Let's drop him into the action. So they drug King Kong, they bring him to where Godzilla is rampaging, and they drop him from the helicopters next to Godzilla so they would fight. Also the chains. You know, Godzilla is chained on the ship. Yeah, that, that that's something which has always been there, no? Yes, yes. That's why I'm saying that's that was in your favorite version from the 70s. Hmm. And that was the original version. King Kong was chained in the theater. Yeah, so that was... Uh, again, a nice trick. They didn't have to keep him on chains. He wasn't going to go anywhere. Uh, I really liked uh, the backstory or, or the origin story, uh, we might call it, for both Godzilla and uh, Kong in this film. I'm just wondering that, uh, is it something new that they've created or or was this uh, mythology always there uh, for, for Kong and Godzilla both? I think it's new. It's new? No, this whole hollow earth theory. Hmm. Something they touched upon in the first um, Kong Skull Island film from a few years ago. Because the original origins of Godzilla was nuclear war. He was Godzilla was nuclear war, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the, yeah, that, yeah. Uh, yeah. And King Kong was just always king of Skull Island. But 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 the uh, but the the visual and the sequences shot uh, inside the Hollow Earth they were so magnificent. It's it's not even funny. They were so beautiful. Perfect. Trippy, yeah. 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 They were really they were really <laughs> That's amazing. beautiful. That's a drug addict's dream. <laughs> <laughs> That's something what must have looked really, really good in the cinema hall, or was it not? Yeah. It was, it was. And then you have that surprise attack. No yeah. spoilers. Yeah. Which you can't go to a place without giant lizards. Yeah, like uh, they said there was an ecosystem there, so, so they, they were bound to be, you know. Other Journey to the center of the earth, right? Journey to the center of the earth, yeah. yeah. All I kept thinking, this is Journey to the center of the earth. I think that's what so, they, that's where they must have sourced it from. It was very evident for, the, for that matter. Yeah, yeah. Are we spoiling it by saying this? I don't think so. Okay. Uh, or are we? I think, um, we I think are. we're just making uh, the viewers more curious, I think. Or I, I okay. hope so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I, I, I think then we should wind it up now because uh, we don't want to keep it as long as the other videos. Yeah. So uh, I guess the, the idea is that both of us watched it and both of us loved it. And one film, which I, I felt that would have been a lot more fun in the cinema halls, but then there are certain things we don't have any control upon. So so I had to watch it on at home on television. And uh, that's, that's it. A any final uh, takeaways from the film, Tim? No, no, I've just had a good time. I'm probably going to go see it again next week one more thing though one more thing the last godzilla film with you know mothra and good then the uh, three-headed thing whatever its name was um that movie was so irritating because the people were so irritating the dialogue was so flat so the delight of this movie is i think they got rid of about 60 percent of the people there's so much less people talking nonsense to each other. Also, I think that film for me had a lot of visual distortion, you know, like mm -hmm. uh, I, I, it was like, what are we watching? What is this? The visuals don't look from any place I can, you know, understand, comprehend or relate. And, and yeah. it's too much of a thing, like, you know, all the Titans, that's what they were calling them. They have, you know, um, j just decided to wake up and they're all coming at the same time. This film, on the other hand, was quite believable from that front. You know, yes, uh, yes. You had that comedy uh, routine, the three comedy actors, the young woman from um, Stranger Things and the podcaster and the young woman's. Um, yeah, okay. best you've, you've always got that sidekick, the, the innocent guy who's a little bit fearful and, and funny. Just like Spider Man's, the new Spider Man movie's sidekick. And yeah, yeah. yeah. And I also, comic, 
Sorry, go on. It was comic relief. It was it was delightful. Yes, There's and also bad. what I liked was that you know there were two very distinct teams. So there were uh, two very distinct team of people. Uh, who who were uh, one is working with uh, the Kong and one is working with the Godzilla and things were very much uh, comprehensible. You know, it yes. was not a, it was not a mess that you know a thousand things are happening at the same time and, and it's impossible to keep a track. So you give up and you don't want to understand what's happening because that's what happens with me in most of the movies these days. You know, may it be the the superhero movies or or these uh, monster movies uh, they, they tend to put in a bit too much. So if it becomes more complex than one particular level i go like okay i give up all right so i think that's it for today and uh, i would say if you have a thing for uh, monster movies and uh, if you can if, if you can palette a bit of destruction of the cities and if you don't find that too disturbing i think this film is definitely uh, a fun ride so uh, so we, we both enjoyed the film a bit too much i guess godzilla and- is a fun ride kids remember that godzilla is your friend I'm going to I'm going to search for this thing on Amazon today itself. I want that. And I'll get one Kong also and both of them will sit very peacefully together on my table. So uh <laughs> <laughs> All right then. Uh so so much fun and wonderful talking to you. Uh, and Always good uh, to talk to you. And until next time, you know. Uh take care. Keep reading, keep watching. Cheers. Okay. Cheers, man. <laughs>